destruction of the Dragon Pit is not only a key event in the Dance of the Dragons, but one that would have an untold impact on the eventual fate of the Targaryen dynasty and the whole of the Seven Kingdoms. The loss of the Dragon Pit and so many dragons as a result greatly diminished the power of the Targaryens. Although they still had the sheer manpower to keep hold of power, they would never be as feared as they once were without their dragons. Due to the importance of the building, and the role it plays at towards the end of the Dance of the Dragons, this video will take a look at its history and how it became a beacon of Targaryen power. The pit itself was commissioned by the infamous King Maegor the Cruel. After the completion of the Red Keep in 45 AC, Maegor commanded that the ruins of the Sector of Remembrance be cleared from the top of Rhaenys' hill, and with them, the bones and ashes of the warrior sons who had perished there. In their place, he decreed a great stone stable for dragons would be erected, a lair worthy of Balerion the Black Dread and Vagar. After Maegor had the stonemasons who built the Red Keep killed after its completion, he struggled to find workers willing to work on the project for him, and ended up using prisoners from the cells under the Red Keep, under the supervision of master builders from Mir and Volantis. Much like the building of the Red Keep, the construction of the Dragon Pit continued during the reign of Maegor's successor, King Jaehaerys Targaryen. At first, the project was under the command of Hand of the King, Lord Rogar Baratheon. In 49 AC, Rogar married the Queen Regent, Jaehaerys' mother, Alyssa Valarian, in the under-construction Dragon Pit, witnessed by 40,000 of the common folk of King's Landing. This would be the first big event to be held in the Dragon Pit. Rogar had hoped to complete the Dragon Pit before Jaehaerys came of age, and would start to rule in his own right, but found himself lacking the proper funds to do so by 50 AC. After Jaehaerys assumed rule, his master of coin Rigo Draz secured funds by loaning gold from the banks of Bravos, Tyrosh and Mir. By 52 AC, King Jaehaerys would often visit the under-construction dragon pit to keep an eye on its progress. Eventually, due to all the taxes imposed by the Master of Coin, Rigo Draz, to pay for the Dragon Pit's completion and the other improvements to King's Landing commanded by King Jaehaerys, Rigo's popularity plummeted significantly and he became the most hated man in the city among small folk and nobles alike. Construction of the pit was finally completed in 55 AC and a great tourney was held in its celebration. So Luca More Strong was the victor in the melee and was rewarded with the white cloak of the King's Guard. When Balerion the Black Dread returned to Westeros after being missing for the best part of a year with the late Princess Arya Targaryen, King Jaehaerys had the dragon confined to the dragon pit. From then on, the huge old Targaryen dragon would spend most of his time in the pit, sleeping. He also created a new order of 77 warriors, the Dragon Keepers, to guard the royal dragons. Three younger dragons were soon brought from Dragonstone and housed within the pit, along with Balerion, though Jaehaerys and Queen Alysanne kept their own dragons, Vermithor and Silverwing, by their sides at the Red Keep. By 72 AC, Caraxes were considered the fiercest young dragons living in the Dragon Pit. Later, in 75 AC, Princess Alyssa Targaryen claimed Maelys as her mount in the Dragon Pit. In 84 AC, Princess Sarah Targaryen attempted to sneak into the Dragon Pit, but was caught by the Dragon Keepers and returned to the Red Keep. Ten years later, in 93 AC, Prince Viserys Targaryen, the grandson of King Jaehaerys, claimed Balerion the Black Dread from the Dragon Pit, only for the dragon to die of old age soon after. After the death of Jaehaerys in 103 AC, his body was cremated in the pit by his own dragon, after which his ashes were placed with his late wife, Good Queen Alysanne on Dragonstone. At the start of the Dance of the Dragons in 129 AC, King Aegon II Targaryen, was crowned in the dragon pit, surrounded by the small folk of the city. It is thought this open coronation in the dragon pit was an intentional choice as a way of making a statement of Aegon's right to be king over Rhaenyra. According to Grand Maester Munkin, more than 100,000 small folk were jammed into the building, while the full mushroom claims the stone benches were only half filled. The reality of this is likely somewhere in the middle. Later on in the war, when Queen Rhaenyra ruled the city, the dragon pit housed nine dragons. Caraxes, Vermithor, Silverwing, and Sheepstealer, who all eventually flew off the battle, leaving Shyrox, Morgul, Tyrax, and Dreamfire. During this time, the Dragon Pit became the site of executions of traitors, rebels, and murderers, and the pit was now being used for public spectacle as a way of raising much-needed taxes. For the price of three pennies, the people of the city were allowed to watch the criminals be beheaded and the corpses fed to Rhaenyra's dragon. By 130 AC, it became the custom that at least one of the dragon riders resided in the dragon pit at all times, 
to raise the defence of the city should this be necessary. This was mostly due to the advancing Hightower host, accompanied by Prince Deron, the brother of Aegon, and his own dragon. Near the end of Rhaenyra's hold over the city, the five dragons that remained in the city were killed during the storming of the dragon pit. When ten thousand of the crazed and starving small folk led by the shepherds stormed the dragon pit to kill the dragons. All four dragons remaining inside were killed in the struggle, as well as an unknowable number of small folk. The dragon pit was reduced to flaming ruins. For more information about the fall of the dragon pit, you can watch the video listed in the description. The dragon pit was essentially a huge domed castle that doubled as an arena of sorts atop Rhaenys' hill. The main gate consisted of massive doors made of mainly bronze with some iron, and they were so wide that 30 knights could ride through at once. There were dozens of lesser entrances with more basic oak and iron doors. The building's walls were thick and the roof strong, and a huge dome was constructed above the pit to allow the dragons the freedom to fly a small distance. Benches were located within the pit itself, which we could seat an estimated 80,000. Within the structure, long brick line tunnels have been dug deep into the hillside, fashioned like caves, five times as large as the dragon's lair on Dragonstone. Beneath the dome, there were 40 huge undervolts which had been carved in the Great Ring. These man-made caves were closed off at both sides by thick iron doors. The inner doors opened onto the sands of the pit itself, and the outer doors opened to the hillside, when living dragons still nested beneath the dome. Light would shine through the windows at night. After the storming of the pit, the huge dome lie broken, the building in ruins, the pit's walls blackened with fire, and the sands and the fire turned to glass in places. While some Targaryen kings would try and restore the pit, the cost and lack of dragons would mean the once great beacon of Targaryen power would forever remain a ruin.